Louisville received a boost to its front court rotation on Friday as former big man Akoy Agal will return to the Cardinals as a graduate transfer. The 6'8 Agal originally committed and enrolled at Louisville for a season and a half to begin his college hoops career before transferring to Georgetown. After leaving the Hoyas to play at SMU last season, Aga received a sixth year of eligibility from the NCAA after battling injury for much of his career. Aga gives Louisville an experienced forward who should earn some solid minutes next season. The Mustangs during the 2017-18 season, Aga averaged 5.0 points and 3.6 rebounds per game in 16.1 minutes per contest. While this isn't the biggest splash for the Cardinals, they have plenty of scholarships to use for next season as new head coach Chris Mack tries to find a stable rotation. Getting a graduate transfer like Aga, who should be familiar with the school and the conference at the very least, is a nice step for a one-year placeholder. Texas Southern Guard and NCAA tournament darling Trade Jefferson announced on Saturday that he's leaving the school. The 5'7 Jefferson was sensational at times during his sophomore season with the Tigers as he put up 23.1 points, 4.6 assists and 3.1 rebounds per game, helping lead Texas Southern to a victory in the 2018 NCAA Tournament's first four in Dayton over North Carolina Central. One of the most entertaining talents in college basketball, Jefferson is leaving Texas Southern in part because former head coach Mike Davis took the job at Detroit this offseason. While Detroit is going to be the favorite to land Jefferson, because of his connection to Davis, it'll be interesting to see what his transfer market looks like. Jefferson also made it clear on his Twitter page that he would like to be closer to his hometown of Milwaukee so that he can be closer to his ailing grandfather. Get NCAA transfer rules, Jefferson would likely have to sit out next season before getting two more years of eligibility but he could be applying for a waiver if he's trying to be closer to home to deal with his family situation. I will not be returning to Texas Southern University My time in Houston is up Circle them information Blood type A smirk Full score Trey Jefferson at Trey Jefferson June 23, 2018 Nevada lost a talented player from last season's team as rising junior Josh Hall opted to transfer to Missouri State on Friday night. The 6'7 Hall is a former top 150 recruit who played a key part in the Wolf Pack's postseason run as he elevated his play to average 13 points and 4.7 rebounds per game during the 2018 NCAA tournament. Hall also made the game winning bucket to lift Nevada past number 2 seed Cincinnati in the second round. Although Hall picked up his play late in the year, he was coming off the bench most of his sophomore campaign as he averaged 6.9 points and 3.9 rebounds per game last season. Since Nevada took in some talented transfers while players like Jordan Caroline and the Martin Twins opted not to turn pro, it left head coach Eric Musselman with too many scholarship players for the 2018-19 season. It looks like some of those issues are now going away as Hall is leaving for Missouri State and graduate transfer guard Ehab Amin opted to decommit from the school. Nevada is expected to be a preseason top 10 team next season with all of the talent they have returning to the roster, along with the addition of some new pieces like McDonald's All-American big man Jordan Brown. Hall will likely have to sit out next season due to NCAA transfer rules as he still has two years of eligibility remaining. Pick.twitter.com slash 11 Brevard Spec, Josh Hall, at Josh 33 Hall, June 23, 2018 The frosty relationship between Chris Weber and the University of Michigan could be thawing thanks to an invitation from football head coach Jim Harbaugh. On Friday, Harbaugh called in to WTK's The M Zone as show host Jamie Morris had Weber on the show. Harbaugh offered Weber the opportunity to be an honorary captain for the Michigan football team next season, to which Weber replied that he would love the opportunity. Weber, a former member of the Fab Five who helped the Wolverines to two consecutive NCAA tournament title game appearances in 1992 and 1993, has not associated directly with the school or with other members of the Fab Five for many years. 
the NCAA mandated that Weber and Michigan not associate with one another for 10 years after the Ed Martin booster scandal. Weber has always been reluctant to participate in anything Michigan or Fab Five related. When the famous Fab Five documentary was made a few years ago, Weber was the only member of the quintet not to participate in the making of the film. Jalen Rose, Jawan Howard, Jimmy King and Ray Jackson all have a solid relationship with the University of Michigan at this point. Weber later criticized the film during an appearance on The Don Patrick Show, as King and Rose fired back with responses to reignite the feud. In the past, Rose has also been vocal in his belief that Weber should apologize for what happened at Michigan, as the group is hoping to move forward. Although Weber still isn't mending fences with the other Fab Five members, or the basketball program, returning to Michigan in some kind of official capacity is a big deal considering his past with the school. Harba and Weber haven't decided on a game for next season yet as that will be something to watch for over the next several months. NCAA President Mark Emmert, the man in charge of a non-profit association that doesn't have enough money to pay its laborers, received a $500,000 raise for the 2016 calendar year, bringing his total income to more than $2.4 million, according to an NCAA tax return that was obtained by USA Today. That number actually pales in comparison to the salaries that are received by the commissioners of the Power Five conferences. But there's not enough money to pay the players. Everyone is broke. Carry on with your day, and pray for the well-being of NCAA administrators like Mark Emmert, whose salary is in no way whatsoever inflated by amateurism, which allows the schools and the NCAA to bank all of the advertising revenue that college basketball and football brings in and bars the players themselves from accessing that money. It was little surprise Thursday night Dante DiVincenzo get drafted 17th overall at the NBA draft by the Milwaukee Bucks. The 6-foot-5 guard has been a staple of mock drafts since he declared for the draft after earning most outstanding player honors as Villanova won its second national championship in three years. A few months ago, though, something like that would have seemed an extreme long shot after an unremarkable freshman season by the Delaware product who redshirted after a foot injury in 2015-16. A lot can change in a single season. So who is the next player to go from fringe prospect to first-round selection? Here's the DiVincenzo watch list. Jordan Poole, Michigan, you might remember the Michigan freshman for his game-winner against Houston to help the Wolverines on their way to the national title game, but the former top 100 recruit averaged just 12.2 minutes per game for John Beeline last year. This season, he's in line for a lot more PT and a chance to shine for more than one moment. NICKEIL Alexander Walker, Virginia Tech, the 6 foot 5 guard can really fill it up, but battled mightily with inconsistency last season. There were nights he'd go for 15 plus and follow it up with a succession of single digit performances. His offensive game, his ability to make plays and quarterback pick and roll, will make him an intriguing NBA prospect. Being able to do it night in and night out could make him a first rounder. Jared Culver, Texas Tech, Sarah Smith got all the NBA attention last year while Keenan Evans got the attention of Big 12 defenses, but Culver is a bona fide prospect in his own right. The Red Raiders will be his team next season, and if he shoots it a little better, converted at 38.2% from three as a freshman, it's not inconceivable it's his last in Lubbock. O'Shea Brissett, Syracuse, the 6'8 forward quietly had a very productive freshman season, averaging 14.9 points and 8.8 .8 rebounds per game for the Orange. He needs to be more efficient, but if he can start making shots with more regularity, he's plenty comfortable shooting from the outside, he'll rocket up draft boards. Amir Coffey, Minnesota, Coffey looked like a blue-chip recruit before an ACL tear in high school set him back, and shoulder surgery cut a promising sophomore season short. If he can get past the injuries, Coffey is an intriguing wing prospect at 6 foot 8 with plus athleticism. His shooting has improved since getting on campus with the Gophers and if that trend continues, NBA teams will take serious notice.
Alex O'Connell, Duke, a top 75 recruit in 2017, O'Connell got limited run last year for the Blue Devils, but shot 48.9% on 45 attempts from three-point range. He should move up the pecking order this season for Duke and could be an impact player off the bench. Lyndall Wigginton, Iowa State, the Cyclones' leading scorer flirted with going pro after a freshman season in which he averaged 16.7 points and shot 40.1% from three-point range before ultimately returning to Ames. The 6'3 guard is one of the most explosive leapers in college basketball, but needs to improve his decision-making and ball handling. If he makes even moderate gains in those areas, his physical tools and ability to score the ball could have Adam Silver announcing his name next June. Jalen McDaniels, San Diego State, the 6'10 forward averaged 10.5 points and 7.5 rebounds as a freshman and waited until the final hours before the deadline before announcing his decision to return to the Aztecs. He's got a ton of upside but some concerns are meager block rate 2.5% and non-existent game at the arc 4 of 18 from 3 last year. Both of those are issues for big men in the modern NBA. He needs to improve one or both of those areas while continuing to be an above-average rebounder to explode onto the draft scene next summer.